Hey y'all, it's Lindsay. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I've got laundry motivation coming your way. <laughs> Today's video is a collab with my friend Cassie over at Finally Cassie. I will make sure that her video is linked in the description box below, but you should definitely go check her out because you're gonna absolutely love her. Not only is she an adorable mama, she also has loads of cleaning motivation on her channel and she is super, super sweet. So check her out, let her know that I sent you. And if you're coming over from Cassie's channel, thank you so much for deciding to check out my video. I hope you like what you see and consider that are subscribing. I don't know about you, but when it comes to laundry motivation, I don't need motivation to actually like wash the laundry or dry it because I'm not doing it. <laughs> the machine is doing it. I literally just have to pick clothes up and throw them in there and we're done. I need motivation once they're clean to be folding the clothes. So hopefully you're the same way. If so, you're going to love this video. Now Cassie and I both figured out that we had recently had a influx of new subscribers, which if you were one of them, thank you so much. We very much appreciate you. Um, but you might not know our stories yet. So we decided to do laundry folding along with chit chatting, which kind of awkward, I guess, when you're talking to a camera, but I am genuinely really wanting to get to know you guys. So I do hope you take advantage of the comment section down below and answer the questions that I ask because I read every comment, I respond to every comment, and I really, really wanna make sure that um, I'm getting to know my subscribers. So grab some laundry that needs folding. If you're so inclined, grab a glass of wine because, you know, if you make it fun, you'll get it done, right? <laughs> and it's like, we're chatting. We're just gonna be a bunch of girlfriends sitting here chatting. So grab it and let's get going. And we're off. So the first thing I wanna talk about is one of the biggest questions that I get asked on my Instagram channel, which shameless plug, if you don't follow me over there, you should. The handle is at everyfiveyears.com, the number five, not the letter or not the word five. Um, I will obviously have it somewhere down here below. So anyway, yeah, go check me out. But one of the big questions that I always get asked is what is up with your channel name? <laughs> so, and I wanna know, this is your first like thing to go comment down below. What do you think it means? Because I've got some really funny things that people have said. I've heard that I have a child every five years, <laughs> which I think is funny. I have heard because I'm a cleaning and cooking channel that I clean or cook once every five years, which is also funny to me. I wish I could do that. Actually, I don't wish I could do that. What I wish is that I could do that and still have a very clean house, right? Like who doesn't want that? Anyway, so let me know in the comments below what you think my channel name means. But in the meantime, I'll tell you the story. So when I was 35, which, I'm almost 40 now, I'll be 40 in a couple of months, uh, May. Anyway, when I was 35, I woke up one day and realized that I was a completely different person at 35 than I was at 30. Like different entirely. I had different motivations, I had different priorities, I had different interests, I had different, uh, I was in a different life stage. There was, everything was different. Um, and then I started thinking even deeper and I was like, okay, but actually I'm a very different person at 30 or 35 than I was at 30. And then I was different at 25 than I was at 30 and I was different at 20 than I was at 25. So the concept of every five years was born and essentially it is you have five years to become the next version of yourself, whatever you want that to be. And if you didn't like, if you don't like where you're at or you didn't like the person you were before, no worries, you can be a different person. And the five years is like an arbitrary number because you could certainly do that in two years or you know, you could do it in seven years, but five years seemed like a nice clean number. So the blog was born. And yes, you heard that correctly. The blog was born. So I do have a blog everyfiveyears.com, if you couldn't guess. Um, that's what originally started. I didn't have a YouTube channel at first. I, it was just the blog. Uh, please go check it out. However, be forewarned that there is literally nothing there that um, it, I, basically I haven't updated it in a year because um, 
I turned my attention to the YouTube channel. So I do intend to get back to it. It's just not quite ready yet. But anyway, definitely go check it out. So yeah, so every five years is that. You can just choose who you want to be. And the blog and the YouTube channel was originally supposed to just document my journey, whatever journey I had decided to be on for those five years. And uh, when I, at 35, my journey was fitness and health because I travel a lot for work or I did before the pandemic. And so I never really was home long enough to cook and you know, exercise and things like that. Um, and also I'm a type one diabetic and my blood sugar, my A1C, which is a blood test that I'll have to get every few years that, or for a few months that talks about, or it tells you like how good your blood sugars are in control or whatever. My A1C was a lot higher than it needed to be. So 35 years, or not 35 years ago, oh my gosh, I'm not that old. 35 is when I decided, yeah, here's when I'm going to start focusing on my health. And here we are now at 40, in case you're wondering how I've done. I have now made it a habit. I work out Monday through Friday. I take the weekends off, um, namely because I've got other things I'm doing, but also just, just because. Um, but every Monday through Friday, I work out, and my A1C is the best it has ever been. So it has been good. I've also started to learn how to cook, if you can't tell from the channels that you see on my blog or the videos you see on my blog. And so, yeah, I mean, I think it went pretty good. All right, so the next question I get asked a lot is my dog's origin story, <laughs> which sounds weird when you say it, but like I've had other videos where I kind of have like alluded to it, but I haven't actually ever said the full story and it's a pretty cool story. So my dog is half some sort of like German Shepherd uh, or Belgian Malinois, something like that, and half Coyote. Yes, Coyote. And so how I found him, I went to San Antonio for a Spurs game, go Spurs, love Spurs, um, and was, went to a gas station and I was filling up gas as one does at a gas station. And I looked next to the pump and there was a shoe box that was closed and it was squeaking and it was wiggling. Now, in hindsight, I probably should have left that one alone because you never know what might have been in there. But at the time I was like, oh my gosh, like this has to be something cool. So I opened it and there were four little puppies in there. So I took two and another woman who was there at the same time I was took the other two. I wish I had stayed in touch with her actually because I want to know what happened to them. But anyway, um, so I ended up with two puppies. I, fun story, went to the basketball game anyways and just had these little puppies in my purse at the basketball game because I didn't want to leave them in the car, obviously. And I didn't know what else to do with them. I am not from San Antonio, so, um, you know, it's not like I had a house or something. Like, anyway, long story short, went to the basketball game, came back home and took them to the vet the next day and the vet had said they had been born the day that I had found them. So they, I mean, little tiny puppies that were like this big. I've got, um, do I have, oh yeah, look, hold on. I'm gonna grab some photos I've got of Irie the days that we found them, just a second. Okay, so this was how big he was. Can you believe it? Oh my gosh. This was me giving him his bath, his very first bath, at two weeks old. He was tiny! Oh my gosh! I've never had a dog that small before, that young, I guess. And so, like, anyway, it was super, super cool. Um, he is now seven and a half years old. He'll be eight in January. Oh, he stole my heart. Uh, and I am so bonded with this dog, so bonded. Unfortunately, his brother that I took um, also didn't make it. He passed away about a month and a half into the ordeal. Actually, it's not an ordeal, that's rude. The um, blessing of raising these dogs. 
he passed away about a month and a half into it. And um, anyway, I really thought I was going to lose Irie too, but um, I did not. Irie is still alive and well and much larger. I don't know. Let me turn this. Can you see him laying there? Irie, you want to say hi? He's having a day, which maybe he needs a glass of wine too. <laughs> Anyways, so that's the, the origin story of Irie. Um, some people also ask about his name. Irie is, uh, in, in his case, um, Irie is Irish and I'm gonna butcher the saying, but there is a saying that translates to may the, rose, the road rise up to meet you. And it's called uh, like, again, I'm gonna butcher it. So if you're Irish, please don't make fun of me. But in Gaelic, it says, it's like uh, Ganairi lot or something like that, but Ganairi lot. And Iri in that instance means luck. Like, cause may the road rise up to meet you essentially means good luck. So. Irie means luck. So I named him Irie because, I mean, it was super lucky that, he's super lucky that I found him, but also I'm super lucky that I found him because he is just my world. So Irie it is. Now I'm curious to know if you guys have pets and if you do, what kind are they? What are their names? How old are they? What's their origin story? Definitely tell me if there's a super cool origin story. Like if you're holding on to a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle, uh, share the wealth and let everybody know about that because I just, I need super cool stories like that in my life. So let me know down below what you've got. Now, let me take a drink of wine. The other question I get asked a lot is what I do for work because you've heard me say on a couple of videos before that I, YouTube is not my full-time job. I work outside the home and um, if you watched my spring cleaning series back in April, it was all about like how to spring clean the fast and lazy way <laughs> because I basically like had no energy after I got off of work to actually spring clean but it needed to be done. So. Uh, I just wanted to do everything the lazy way. So what do I do for work? I'm in marketing. I work for a company, a tech company that's headquartered in the UK. Uh, prior to the pandemic, I was over there in Cambridge, right outside of London. I was in Cambridge every three months, um, which was awesome. I really hope we get back to that after the pandemic is over, but obviously I haven't been traveling since you know, everything got locked down. Um, but they're a tech company and I do marketing for them in our Austin, Texas office. And um, yeah, I love it. Although marketing's not always what I wanted to do. When I was in college, honestly, what I really wanted to do was I wanted to be a profiler for the FBI. I know that's very specific, but like, that's what I wanted to do. So I was a semester away from graduating, you guys, a semester away from graduating with a forensic anthropology and forensic psychology double major. And I wanted, the whole plan was to go into the FBI. And I don't know what came across me, but I started thinking about it and I was like, you know, if I, first of all, you have to go in and be a special agent. You can't just like, boom, I'm a profiler. You have to start by being a special agent. Then you have to like qualify to go to Quantico. And then just because you're in Quantico doesn't mean you're going to end up in the behavioral science unit. So then you'd have to like get over there. And that's probably like, I don't know how it really works because I didn't actually go into the FBI, but it seems like it's the elite of the elite, right? So like there was no guarantee that I was actually going to get there. And also, I just wasn't sure, cause it was just gonna take a long time, I felt. So, I changed to graphic design <laughs> and marketing, which is the weirdest like change, but it is what happened. So, I changed. Um, other fun facts about, I guess, careers in my life. I was actually recruited by the CIA, <laughs> and I'm not even joking, however, lower your expectations of how cool this story is because I was not recruited to be like 
a spy or anything, that would have been super cool. I was recruited to be a, a graphic designer for the CIA. So they would, like the data analysts would do all the analyzing of the data. <laughs> and then they would give you the uh, data that you had to, as a designer, you would put a visual to it and it would basically be on the briefings, like the president briefings and the things like that. So you would design the data. Anyway, um, but, so, wasn't as cool as being a spy, but I did go out to Langley, I did um, interview, I went to the final interview in Langley. They, they came to Texas first, twice, to interview me, and I passed those. I had to do like a physical exam, I had to do a lie detector test, I had to do a psychological eval, I had to do like so many things. I had to fill out a form on every single foreign national that I know. It was crazy. Um, but, unfortunately, I ended up not getting it, so I wish I could tell you I'm a CIA agent, but I'm not, so. Uh, but yeah, so that's my, my cool story, is that I wanted to be a profiler, was recruited by the CIA, and then ended up in marketing. <laughs> so, who, who knew that that was how my life was gonna go? So tell me what you do for work, or if you're a stay-at-home mom, I wanna hear about that. Tell me about your kiddos, tell me how old they are, tell me how long you've been a stay-at-home mom. That's a real job, don't let anybody tell you it's not. So, anyways, uh, but you, if you do work outside the home, tell me what you do. Tell me if that is what you always wanted to do, or if, like me, you're doing something completely different from where you thought you would end up. So, chat below, let me know. Uh, what else can we talk about? Oh, let's say growing up. So not when you were like a child child, but when you were maybe like middle school, high school, college even, did you play sports? And if so, what'd you play? I'm curious. I've always been a very in a very athletic family. My mom was a professional ballet dancer. Um, if you were in ballet, you might know this, and maybe you do if you don't, I, anyway. Do you know who Mikhail Baryshnikov is? If you're in ballet, you definitely do. My mom got to dance with Mikhail Baryshnikov. She did a tour in Europe uh, when she was 20. She, her, um, I forget which ballet company she was a part of here, but like they, they she toured it, Europe with some of the um, ones there. And she, was dan she got to partner in practice with Mikhail Baryshnikov. Oh, can you believe it? Oh man, anyway, so she was a professional ballet dancer. My dad was a professional baseball player, Chicago Cubbies, yes. Um, he actually did not play for the Cubs, but he played for the Cubs organization, so he was in their, uh, like, the minor leagues team. But he uh, was going to be drafted by the Chicago Cubs, and then he hurt his rotator cuff. He played shortstop, hurt his rotator cuff, and they wouldn't draft him, unfortunately. So. Here we are. Um, honestly, that's probably why I exist because he did not live in Chicago. He lived in Texas where my mom met him. So I guess, you know, blessing in disguise. But I've always had a very athletic family. And so I have played sports myself. I played a zillion sports, but the one that was like my thing was volleyball. So I started volleyball when I was 12 and um, I played, wow. Well, um, honestly, I stopped playing about three years ago when I hurt my shoulder and I could go back to playing. I could go back to playing, but I am afraid that I'm going to hurt it more and I might need surgery. If I was going to play again, I would just probably go ahead and get the surgery. So I'm currently trying to decide. And let me tell you, let me tell you about this. This is like, it's a hard decision because since I've been 12, <laughs> Volleyball's been my life, like my life. I played club, I played, I went to the Junior Olympics. Okay, so that's one thing you probably didn't know about me. I went to the Junior Olympics and I played against Carrie Walsh, who if you are a volleyball fan or you are a uh, US beach volleyball fan in the Olympics, you know who Carrie Walsh is. I played against her in the Junior Olympics before she was Carrie Walsh, obviously. Um, her team beat mine, so you know, there's that, but I mean, this volleyball has been a part of my identity for ages, ages. And um, 
I'm just now to the point where it's like, okay, am I too old to play? Am I, am I gonna hurt myself more by trying to play? But I don't know if I'm ready to give up that part of my identity yet. So tell me if you sympathize. Let me know down in the comments. Did you play sports? Do you still play sports? Even if it's not sports, do you have something that is just like ingrained in your identity that you're starting to kind of feel like maybe the season has passed and it's time for you to look somewhere else? Let me know. Tell me how you feel about it because honestly, I legit will cry about it. <laughs> it's like a big deal to me. Anyways. All right, so I have folded one load of laundry and I think I'm gonna call it a day. I do have more lo loads to do, but I figure uh, this is a new kind of style of video for my channel and I don't know if you're gonna like it or not. So instead of just having five hours of me like bearing my soul to you, I figured I'd stop here, leave you wanting more as they say. Uh, let me know if you like videos like this, give it a thumbs up so I know maybe I'll do it again sometime. Um, otherwise, even if you didn't like the style of video, I hope you learned something new about me and I hope you participated by answering the questions in the comments down below so that I can learn something new about you. Check out Cassie's channel, you won't regret it, and I hope that I will see you soon. Talk to you later, bye.